What is up YouTube, Modern Mods back again. And today we're gonna to be doing some work to the RAM. And we are gonna be installing some of these, like what you would call like hexagon shaped um, LED grill lights here. So I'll be doing this video on this style grill here. You have, um, obviously you have your OEM style grill with the hexagon with the cross in the middle. You have the aftermarket hexagon style and you also have the RAM Rebels that have that um, OEM hexagon style with the RAM lettering in it. This is pretty much a universal mod. In my fitment, it's gonna be a little more custom. So if you guys are working with my style grill, you will like this video because it's gonna show you exactly how I did it. And the beauty of this mod is you can arrange these lights in any way possible. I'll show you how I made them fit into the truck and um, just give you some tips on that aspect as well and how to wire these. So today we're gonna to show you how to install the lights, wire them up and showcase the beauty that these lights um, admit. And without further ado, let's just jump right into the install. All right, guys, so just to showcase real quick what comes in the box, you have your box here. You have your four lights that um, have a wire coming off of them with a twist on kind of adapter here to the actual power harness where, again, you have the twist ons, which is, you know, got the waterproof seal and you just easily slide over twist in so no splicing required to get to your power this is really nice when you want to just set it up and then run your wiring to it um, and then on the end of that wire you have the ground and positive for your power which you know we'll decide what power source we're going to use um, tons of different options for that as well and we'll get to that in a video as well as a fuse tap because we will be tapping into a fuse uh, this is pretty cool in some instances you might not be able to use this but in some cases you might um, so we'll just see once we get to that part, but that's kind of the unboxing right there, everything inside the box. So, um, and again, this is a mad baboon product. I've done a few of their products and I'm hoping to do a few more. They do create some really good lighting for the Ram, um, setups as well as some other vehicles. So check them out as well. Link to their products and their store and this product always down below. Um, so with that being said, now we see what's in the box. Let's jump into the step-by-step -step install. All right, guys, so step one is you're gonna wanna get access to your grill. Now, essentially, you don't necessarily need to take this out. What I'm gonna do is um, kind of show you what you can do to take it out. Uh, I will get some more room up top, and I will see if I wanna take it out. I, I might take it out just for video purposes, but we'll take you exactly step-by-step -step on how to get this thing out. It's super easy. Coming over here, you're gonna have some tabs. You got a tab here, a tab here, here, and here. And that will remove this top plastic cover here to gain access to the bolts that you're gonna to need to take out to remove the grill entirely. It's just super easy. So what you can use is a flat head um, or anything that has flat um, angling and you wanna pry up and pull out. They also make the tools. I will grab my tool, show you what that looks like and get these all out. So here's a uh, pin pry tool, very, very handy tool. Makes the job so easy, you can do it with one hand. But right there, you just go in, pry up, and it'll pull it right out. If you're like me, that one wasn't even hard all the way in, so we'll show you on one that's actually in. Pull and pry out, and make sure you got your other hand ready to catch it. Take these four out, and we're on to the next step. Okay guys, so next step is gonna be taking out your 10 millimeter bolts that are holding in the top brackets on the grill. There is four of them. One, two, three, and four. They are um, kind of specific, so you just keep the pairs, remember where they are. Um, I'm pretty sure one's machine thread, metal thread, and one's plastic. Um, and then down at the bottom, you can actually reach your hand in there very easily. And there's a few tabs, that being one of them, that you just wanna kinda of push down on once you get these out and the whole grill will just pull right out nice and easy and you can set it down on a protected padded surface and then we can go ahead with the um, mounting of the lights and get to that part. All right guys, and as you can see, we now have the grill off, super easy process. Now we can get to the actual mounting and placement of your lights. Now again, this is a universal mod, so by that, you can put these lights wherever you want. You do not follow me step by step. Although if you like my setup, feel free to, um, you know, get, get creative guys, put these lights where you want them because no matter where you put them, the wiring and powering up and functionality of them will not change. So let me show you what I'm going to do to get these put into this grill, because as you can see, actually coming over to the lights, 
The design of these are designed to fit into the hexagon shape, which is really, really sweet if you have that style grill. Um, we'll make this job even more simpler. You would just push the wire through, push the lights in, and you would click right into place. With my setup, obviously, um, it's going to be a little different, but not too much more tricky. Um, I'm going to do a few things here, show you what I do to get these lights to stay in. Um, but all in all, will not change the functionality of them, like I said. So what I'm thinking of doing is um, I'm going to be putting in the RAM lights right here. So with that in mind, I'm thinking of doing, um, you know, one there, two in this bar, and then another one over there. So just to give me space for the lights, but I think these lights will accent that RAM light really well when that comes in. So with that being said, like I said, placement does not matter for you, me, whoever. Um, I'm going to be putting these in um, just like this. I'm going to be sliding them in. I'm going to be evenly gapping them and they fit in real nicely. I think I'm going to get it nice and tight to the edge right there. And what I plan on doing is I got a little bit of plastic weld. Um, I'm going to be putting that in there. It's clear stuff, so you won't see it, just to kind of give it a nice, strong bond. And even from the back, if I can, I'll probably apply some there, just again, to have that nice, strong bond. But the overall sizing of the light, um, it actually hides in really well, and it looks in looks really nice, too. It's obviously going to emit a lot of light. You can see the LED strips in there. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. I'll show you what that looks like here. I'll show you what weld I'm using as well, the little plastic weld, super glue, anything like that works. Um, but yeah, I, I would, you know, get creative, guys. Um, I, I bet you guys are going to come up with some really, really sweet ideas, and I'd love to see them. But let me go ahead and get these in and um, show you what I did. I'll get three in and then show you kind of a little process of the last one. All right, guys. So it's been about five minutes. Um, I just been placing them around. Like I said, I think I'm going to go one, two, three, and then my fourth one over here. Um, so to show you what I've been using, I've been using this JB weld. It's a super weld. It is like pretty much a super glue. Um, it is rather runny, not too runny, but a good amount of runny to where if you wanted to get it in a nice tight spot and it just slowly eases down in. And then it has the um, UV light here that actually allows for instant drying. So holding this about an inch away from it for about 10 to 15 seconds will create like a, an immediate bond. And it's super sweet to watch it work. And the beauty of it is, is it's this, this one is uh, clear. So I glued right down the front. Obviously you see a little bit of glare. It is also fresh. So when it dries after about 24 hours, it clears out um, to a point where you can't see it at all. So I did a tack in the front, nice clean line. As you can see, let's see if I can zoom in. So a really quick, clean line there that obviously will not will uh, kind of mat over once it dries, but not noticeable at all when you're looking at it directly on. And even when you're looking at the truck, you're gonna see it like this. But um, I got those lights there, and then I flipped over and did some in the back. Any contact points in the back, but just to show you how I fitted it in. So I simply just placed it through, and then I just ran it to where it kind of snugs up. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm measuring my points to point to kind of make sure it's even. I'm gonna apply my glue again, let it bond, and then we're pretty much done with applying the lights. Next step is just gonna be the wiring, which is, to be honest, just about as easy as this. So um, let me go ahead and tack this one up and I'll meet you guys over there to wire. All right, guys, so as you have your grill sitting down and your lights, you know, curing or, you know, even if they fit it in perfectly, you can keep your grill off for this step. Now coming over here, we have our wiring. So we obviously have our fuse tap and we have our harness um, connections here. Um, just again, to go over these. So in this setup, you have the positive that goes into a quick connect right there into the fuse tap and then the ground. So the way that this um, truck is set up, excuse me, this prop, this fuse tap will not properly function with um, what I have going on. So I've already had a few wires in here. Um, what fuse we're going to be using is the F93 fuse. And if you don't um, know already, you can go into your uh, owner's manual or look online as well. And on one of these pages in the back here, there is going to be a full fuse diagram. And in that fuse diagram, it will explain what every single fuse is. Here we go. Kind of give you a little bit of a reference it'll explain what every fuse is um and you can match correspond the letters 
and numbers to the system that you got on the back of your fuse box cover um, and find the fuse. In my setup, I'm going to be running this to a DRL setup. So a DRL is a daytime running light um, style setup. So the way I have it, the way I have my headlights um, and the way I'm going to have these lights is when the truck ignition powers on, these lights on my headlights, these strips right here, illuminate and as well now those lights are going to illuminate so with those lights illuminating um off of that that'll be my power source and then you can use this right here um as your ground source so it already comes also with a nice and little handy um attachment on the cord so you won't have to do any splicing of any kinds on this part you will unfortunately though if you're going to go with this setup um you might have to, well, for my example, I'm going to have to cut this right here, splice, expose some wire and wrap it around the fuse. And I'll show you what that looks like. Very simple to do. Um, uh, but with the ground, you'll just be able to slide it back, untwist that nut bolt a little bit, slide it back and then tighten it up. And then you should have your power source. So what we want to do is we want to run the wires through. Um, here's your radiator here. Um, so you're going to get a little bit of heat here. These are insulated cords, so they're not going to burn up or anything like that. But my best recommendation would be to route in through here, um, probably following this power source for your um, sensor on your um, washer fluid tank. Go up in there, and then somewhere in this area, you'll be able to reach your hand in, grab, pull, and have a nice little section right there. Everything will be out the way. You won't have to worry about any heat. And all in all, it's just a nice clean run. So I'm going to go ahead and run, starting here, keeping these wires here, starting here. Put that through and then show you what it looks like up there all right guys so i have a ton of slack left over here i followed in through the same route put my hand in this port here uh do be careful though this is your radiator tube so if you've been working and you know riding around in your truck all day and you're about to just jump into this um do allow this some time to cool down because this could burn you and yes it, it's very hot um but i put my arm in here wrapped in grabbed and i got it up to about here and what I did was also just ran through underneath the bracket that's holding on your fuse box. So I have my wires right here, all tucked away. Um, and then I have enough slack to where I can pull down through the excess and then zip tie um, once we get the grill in place and all of the, everything attached. So, you know, nothing will be hanging out and it won't be too exposed. So now what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to splice this wire so I have exposed copper. I'm going to push my end in over here. And then I'm going to tap into that fuse and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. All right, guys. So now that we have our wires here, I went ahead and undid my 10 millimeter bolt here. Um, put the ground pin behind and tightened it back up. And here we, again, here we are again with the F93 fuse. And as you can see, if I can focus in, I have the fuse in hand and I have the wire wrapped around the fuse prong. And then you can go ahead and just reinsert your fuse back into its spot. And then you should have your power connected. So now that I have my ground and I'm uh, about to have my power connected, what I want to do is then come over here and we're going to connect in these connectors right here. All right, guys. So depending on your workspace setup, if you have it like me, you should be able to easily just lay your grill on the ground or maybe have a table or something in front of you to easily access and tighten in these wires and make sure they're good. Yes, you could do it with the grill in place. It's just a little bit scratchy. And with this way, I can show you a little bit more of how these go in. So to show you, they simply twist on. And as you can see, there's two arrows, one on the actual harness coming from the light and one on the harness coming from the wiring. Um, you line those arrows up, push in, and you will feel it go in. Uh, make sure the weather seal, the orange seal is seated nice and then just twist on by hand it gets nice and snug and tight you don't need to tighten it on by a tool um again to show you what it looks like so you have your um harness coming from the car power you got your arrow you got your orange seal and you can see there is actually a notch in there that allows it to slide into place coming over to the harness on the car again looking at it you can see there is an arrow there and looking into you can see there is a small Look at it from this angle, small notch right there that lines up. So you can't put these in wrong. Um, it also does not matter which way or whatever wire you use. There's no specific powering in that point either. So it's just a real simple 
um, push in, twist, and then you're good to go. Once we get this in, I'm just gonna set my grill into place, maybe tack in one screw, and then I'm gonna test to make sure that we have power. All right, guys, so I got the grill pushed in at the bottom, screws just slightly hand twisted in, still could be torqued down, and I got my wire just kind of dangling right there. We'll clean that up in a moment. But what I wanna do is I wanna test, so I wanna make sure that these lights power up on the function that I have them on. Again, mine is the DRL, so they should power up when I turn on my ignition. Um, so this is a really important step. You always wanna do this before you fully fix everything back together, just simply because if you do have to pull these off, possibly to redo some wiring, rerun it, um, anything at all, you don't wanna to have to take this grill back off all the way and you know, done to your plastics, even though it is a beautiful thing to just put everything back together, turn it on and it works perfect. But just to uh, be safe, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the grill now. And just kind of from this look, I really love it. Um, in the camera, it, it's a little hard to see, um, just kind of like it is to the eye. These are, these are pretty camoed in, I'm not gonna lie. If you look hard enough, you could see them, but for a common look, you're not really gonna notice them. I love that. Um, I do love that dark smoked kind of look, and I think these LEDs are gonna look sweet. So let's go ahead, cut down the lights. Let me go ahead and test, make sure I got power. All right, guys, so as you've seen, I got my power up. Everything's doing what it should. Beautiful thing, and they look freaking fantastic. So now you can see I got my wires zip tied up. I got enough slack on every wire so it's not getting pulled taut. It has its play. Um, you know, you don't want to pull too tight on these because they could, you know, obviously break. Um, but everything's in like it should. I love the look. Just go ahead and throw on your top cover, guys, and the job is complete. Um, again, you know, if you wanted this wire set up to be to your headlights, you could use the headlight fuse. Um, you know, tons of different things you can do, but I'm, I'm a DRL guy. I like that setup and I like that look. So that's how I have mine. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for more Ram mods, more Corvette mods, more every vehicle on the earth mods, because I'm always going to be trying to do more and more content. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed these night shots. Remember, link down below. Check out their store. Um, and get these for your truck. You know they look good, so I hope this video helped, and until the next one, guys, peace.